Shalom, you guys, and welcome back to the channel. You know, when your mama messages it and asks when you're going to do a code, it's been too long since you've done a code. So um, <laughs> I got a code for you. And it does have to do with we, you guys. I've been on this thing. I really believe that um, you will hit this day. And I think I know why he hit this day. And I'm going to share that with you in this video. So again, I got a code table for you for those that have been asking. And I want to apologize for, you know, it's been a while since I put one out. And when I have, it's been on the calendar. Um, I haven't really gone off into other subjects because YouTube is not the way it used to be, you guys. And um, I've come close twice to almost having my channel deleted and by the grace of the most high. He kept me floating. So um, I got to be a little better than flying under the radar from now on because um, even that, you know, can come back and bite you weeks or even months or even years later. You guys, I had to clean, <laughs> I had to clean my channel of a lot of videos that um, they would just hit me on. I mean, all the ones on the election that I did, where I called it for months and even the week of the election, I called it to a T. Had to get rid of them. Why? Because they, they call it uh, misinformation in, on the election. Now, it's actually part of the policy. You can't, even, you can't talk about stuff like that. So I got to be really careful. But for this video, and I really hope that you watch it because... Uh, this is pretty cool, what was revealed to me in the codes. In the secret of the wheat, <laughs> you know, the videos that I've done here recently um, has to do with the secret of the wheat. That's the access term he gave me. Um, and there are other tables that I've done. If you haven't seen them already, you guys, I'll put a link in the description for the, the video where I actually go over, I think it's seven code tables that, uh, to me, is a slam dunk, proves the text proving the text that we are indeed supposed to be on a lunar solar calendar, you guys. It is not a continuous seven-day count ending up where you're, every Saturday is your Shabbat. That is not the way the creator um, designed his calendar. It didn't even exist that, uh, that far back. And if you go back to the time of Yeshua, it wasn't even a seven-day week. It was an eight-day week. And Saturday was not the day you think it is. OK, um, so that all that can be proven. But for this video, I want to talk to you about Shavuot. It's been hidden. It's been obscured and I can prove it. And I know why it has um, as well. Just give me a second here. So the secret of the wheat and the sequence of events leading up to when Moses brings down the law. And this is what the the feast is actually commemorating, you guys. Did you know that? This festival is not only about the wheat, but it's also about the law given. It is the day that Moses came down with the tablets. And um, which is Exodus 32, not Leviticus 23. That's where the law is, is given formally, right? Um Leading up to Exodus 32, if you recall, 16 is where we are, where um, Yahuwah gives us the, or he, he says, I'm going to test the people. I'm going to give them the work week. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give them the Shabbat, right? And they start collecting manna. And that manna was measured in an omer. This is how these worlds kind of collide, right? Because you'll find nowhere in the text that tells you to count omers, as in counting days. no. The text actually tells you to count the weeks and number the days, right? Seven Sabbaths complete, and then number 50. That brings you to 102 days, which is the growth cycle of wheat, you guys. that's I've, I think I've established that pretty, pretty strongly, okay? But here is actually ground zero and the reason I believe that Yahuwah hid this feast and has revealed it in our time. This was the former rain. We're living now in the latter rain. Okay. So here's what happened. Exodus 32. And when the people, so, so imagine this, they get the work week and the Shabbat 
and then um, Yahuwah asked them, you know, would you keep my law? They say yes. Moses goes back up on the mountain, right? And he's been gone a while. And by the way, there's a total of eight uh, times that he goes up. So he's going up to getting the law. And he's been gone a long time. And the people start getting, you know, stir crazy. And they start, you know, going off the path, immediately going off the path. But I want you to know this count with Shabbat and keeping the Sabbath is continuing down in the camp because who has them on this pattern of collecting the manna every day. All right. So just a few months down the road is where we're going to get to Exodus 13. And, and folks, this is from the time of the Passover where you gets them on the calendar when they leave uh, on the evening of the 15th at Passover time. The clock has started one month in, they get to a lean, right? The next day they start their first day working, which is day 16 on the calendar. <clears throat> and their first Shabbat is the 22nd day. And then that pattern repeats, 8, 15, 22, 29 of every month. It's exactly the same. They get to, okay. And so in that first count where who gives them basically the, the way things are laid out, there is no grain being grown and harvested and all that. In fact, in the first 40 years, the 40 years that they were in the desert, they did know um, agriculture. Okay, it was only when they went into the land, as it was commanded, when you go into the land, this is what you're going to do, right? So they weren't farming grain. They were foraging when they were in uh, the wilderness. And Yahuwah was, was giving them manna, right? So here's what happens. And when the people saw that Moshe was gone so long and coming down from the mountain, like I just said, the people gathered together to uh, to Aaron and said unto him, Arise, make us mighty uh, mighty ones who go before us. For this Moshe, the man who brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, we did not know what has become of him. Right? He's been gone a long time on the, on the mountain. It's more than 40 days he's been gone. And Aaron said unto them, Take off the golden earrings, which are, he didn't even think about it, right? Just jump right in and said, take off the earrings in which, uh, from the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. And all the people took off the golden earrings, which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he took, uh, this from their hand and he formed it into the, uh, formed it with the engraving tool and made a molded calf. And they said, this is your mighty one, O Israel that brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. You see what they just did? Who was trying to save them from Egypt, and they're bringing Egypt right back into it. They started making a calf, and in Egypt, they would have called it Apis. And because they didn't know what Yahuwah looked like, because they're, they're using Yahuwah's name here, and in, in a moment, you'll see that Aaron actually declares a feast unto Yahuwah, a festival unto Yahuwah, right? So he is attributing these calves or these bulls to the image of what Yahuwah looks like, right? So he's not really doing something malicious where he's trying to mislead the people. No, he was given an image to the, to the personality, okay? And Aaron saw and built an altar before it, and Aaron called, it, called out and said, tomorrow is a festival unto Yahuwah. And here's what's really interesting. It actually was. I don't think that that Aaron knew this uh, right off the bat. I think it was con coincidental, and therefore the two days merged. I mean, Moses is up on the on the mountain getting the law, and the law is about to come down. Right, he's he's about to come down with the law in his hands, and he sees what the people's doing, and he destroys the law. Has to go back up again, right? But in fact, that day which they're doing evil on Shavuot. And this is the day the law was given, you guys. It wasn't. I know that some people say that Pentecost is when the law was given. It was not given. If you go and see where that is in the wilderness, it doesn't fit the pattern. And we're talking about he preserved this in the secret of the wheat, okay? It would not have been enough time to grow wheat in that 50 days. Yahuwah had introduced them to the Torah, uh, the law, but they had not been given it officially. This is that point. 
when Moses was coming down with the physical law in his hands. Okay. And so for those that are that are keeping up to what I'm saying, we know that from Exodus 16, one of the times that Moses come down, he introduced them to the law. Some people designate that day as Shavuot, though the text does not say, and it doesn't say it either here, other than Aaron declaring that tomorrow is a festival of uh, unto Yahuwah. And keep in mind, they're keeping the Shabbat in, in sync with what the festivals are, okay? So just imagine, if, if you can, coming from Passover and counting it all the way out and coming to the 102nd day, this is that day, it's Shavuot, and there's no moon. It's new moon time. Okay. It's the only festival that happens with no moon. It's hidden. They rose up the next day and offered a burnt offering and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, go get down for your people. Look what he did. You, Yahuwah used to say, <laughs> This is my people. But he says, for your people whom you brought out of the land of Misarim have corrupted themselves and they have turned aside quickly out of the which way I commanded them. And they may have made themselves a molded calf and have bound themselves to it and slaughtered to it and said, this is your mighty one, O Yisrael. O Yahuwah knows everything, right? Moses ain't even got there yet. And Yahuwah is telling them what happened. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, I have seen this people and see it is a stiff necked people. Yes, indeed, still is. And now let me alone that my wrath might burn against them and I consume them and make and make of you a great nation. But Moshe pleaded with Yahuwah and his Elohim and said, Yahuwah, why does your wrath burn against your, pe your people? Look how Moses turned it around. Your people whom you have brought out of the land of Misereen. <laughs> Moses flipped the script on him, right? That you brought out of the land of Misereen with great power and with a strong hand. Why should the Mitzrites speak and say, for, for evil he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from the heat of your wrath and relent from uh, this evil unto your people. You guys... They had defiled Yahuwah's very special day. This is the day that he poured out his spirit in the upper room. And he's going to do that in the latter days, this very same day. This day was obscured for a reason. It was first revealed to those in the upper room, right? Because it was preserved in the wheat. It was preserved in the wheat. And they knew when that count was, how that count was. Seven Sabbaths complete. And then number 50 days, you guys, even in, in ancient times, they could do that mathematics. They knew it. They knew the growth cycle of wheat. They knew what day it was. It did not have to say in the text. But many Christians and some Hebrews who are following Pentecost let the text imply that it was 10 days later. It doesn't say it. It says when it was fully come, right, Yahuwah poured out his spirit. So right off the bat, they've, they've defiled his feast. Yahuwah wants to destroy him and start over. Moses pleads with him. Yahuwah relents, right? The fact is, this day is Shavuot. And this is, I believe, the reason why Yahuwah hid it all this time. He hid it from the very first one. And somehow through history, and, I, and I've explained this before, how the Jews started counting the Omer. This happened after Constantine and the Edict not to count weeks anymore. So the Jews started counting Omers, which would mark days. And you can even find articles that I found one where it talks about how in the second century, you see the Lagba Omer, the, um, the particular day that the Jews uh, set aside, which is the 33rd day, Lagba Omer. Is actually a day that commemorates Yahuwah delivering them from a plague in the second century. Now, this is from the Talmud. Okay. So the reason why they don't count weeks anymore and they started counting Omers is because of Constantine threatening to kill them. Then years later, 
because all this is after Yeshua. 321 AD, after Yeshua. So sometime after that, the early Christians from the Roman Catholics picked up on what they were doing, Mark in 50, and they called it Pentecost. That's exactly what happened, you guys. There were nobody in the first century in the time of the disciples that called that day Pentecost. They called it Shavuot. That's a fact. That is a fact. So let me take you to what I have um, in the codes. All right, so I have to go to my other computer here and share screen. And again, the, the actual table is called Secret in the Wheat. Picture out of my stuff out of the way there. There we go. Very good. If you look up at the top, it says Shavuot, right across the top, like a banner. And it says seven days. I have seven days in the text. And by the way, it is, this is at a width, very small width, of 555 or, or 5550, triple nickel, down at the bottom, very condensed area. It does come to the, toward the last part of the prophets. Um, this is Jeremiah up here, and then it goes into Ezekiel. So a lot, um, the bulk of the actual table is in Ezekiel going into minor prophets like Hosea and Amos and Joel and Micah and Habakkuk and Haggai. Zechariah down there. Then it goes into the Psalms. Um, here's the access term. Secret in the wheat is the access term um, in the plain text. Hasophon, the hidden. It is a hidden day. Uh, in the plain text, right off to the side, it says, in the day of the new moon. <laughs> really interesting where this comes up. Uh, hang on just a second. There we go. That's much better. So where this comes up in the text, and um, I like to point that out with, with uh, my students, is pay attention to where the text is or where the, uh, the term is in the text because it's going to play a role. It's going to have something to do with it. So writing the plain text in the day of the new moon, Bayam Chodesh is right there in close proximity. Now, why is that? Why is that so significant? In the day of the new moon, right? Shavuot is at new moon time. There is no moon. It's hidden. It's it's at that time. So let's look at that text. This is really cool how these codes come out like this. So this is Ezekiel. I got 46 highlighted, but I want to back up just a little bit so you can see something here. When is Shavuot? It's in the middle, right? It's in the middle of the feast. And it bookends the wheat season. It initially is commemorating the beginning of the wheat harvest. Okay, but it's not celebrated at the harvest. It's at the beginning of it. The, the harvest would just be getting started. Do you know what actually is the other book in? I'll give you a hint. It's in the seventh month, <laughs> in the 15th day of the month. So how you do like the feast of seven days. According to the sin offering and according to the burnt offering, according to the meat offering, according to the oil. Um, Sukkot is a feast that commemorates the wheat harvest. Okay. And thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be opened, and in the day of the new moon 
it shall be opened. And the prince shall enter by the way of the porch of the gate without, and shall stand by the porch of the gate, by the post of the gate, and the priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings. And he shall worship at the threshold of the gate, and he shall go forth, but the gate shall not be shut until evening, until after the Shabbat. Look how this is this is all coming together. New moon, Shabbat, wheat harvest, the wheat, the secret of the wheat. Let's look at this next. Actually, let's read. I want to read up through two. Did I do that? I did. Again, another mentioning of the new moon. This is when Shavuot is, you guys. But this is also pointing out the, um, the connection to Sukkot to this. Let's look at this next line. So this is Hosea. Two, two is where I start here. What I tell you was going to happen on Shavuot, like the upper room. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one hand, <clears throat> one head. Let's skip on down to this next in Joel, second chapter. Look what's happening. Remember when I said, pour out my spirit. What, when? Shavuot time. Let's just uh, read all of two. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness, a day of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people, a great people and strong. There hath not been like uh, ever like the like, neither shall there any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth, and the land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a, a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and is a horseman, and they shall run like the chariot. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, they shall leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble as the strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. It's a time of distress, you guys. Their faces shall be, their faces, all faces shall gather blackness and they shall run like mighty men. And they shall climb the wall of men of war, and they shall march everyone on his ways, and it shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, none shall be wounded. And they shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the wall, and they shall climb upon the houses, and they shall enter at the windows like a thief and the earth shall quake before them and the heavens shall tremble and the sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining and Yahuwah shall utter his voice before his army and for his camp is very great for he is strong to execute his word for the day of Yahuwah is great and very terrible who can abide it Therefore, also now, saith you, turn ye every, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto Yahuwah, your Elohim, for he is gracious, and merciful, and slow to anger, 
and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. Who knowing if he will re, uh, return and repent and leaving a blessing behind him, even a meat offering. A drink offering unto you who your Elohim blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify a congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth uh, of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest and the ministers of Yahuwah weep between the porch and the altar, and let them that say, Spare, uh, spare thy people, O Yahuwah, and give not thine inheritance to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Who is, who is their Elohim? Then will Yahuwah be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Adonai will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and the wine and oil and shall be satisfied therein. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. And, his, and with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uttermost sea, And his stink shall come up, and his savor shall come up, because he hath gone and uh, done great things. Fear not, O land, and be glad and rejoice, for Yahuwah will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of your wilderness do spring for the, tre the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be ye glad, then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in Yahuwah your Elohim, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause it to come down for you in uh, the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. In the first month, and the floor shall be, what? Shall be full of wheat. And the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And that is what's actually um, what's running through the term there. 24 and 25. And the floor shall be full of wheat. So that is literally running through the secret of the wheat table. What? What does he say next? And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of your Elohim. What? That hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. All right. So we got a mention of the wheat there. Interesting how you see that cough. Right. Going right there. It talks about the wheat, the vats full of wheat. <laughs> the floor shall be full of wheat. This is after the harvest, you guys. That's what that word running through there in the blue is. Harvest. Get seer. Let me read this, this next line. Uh, I did mark this, but I didn't highlight. Thirteen. <clears throat> Seek him that maketh the seven stars of Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning and make the day dark and the night that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth, upon, poureth them out upon the face of the earth. Yahuwah is his name that strengthened the spoil against the strong so that the spoil shall come against the fortress. They hate him and rebuketh at the gate and they abhor him and speak uprightly. For as much as there as treading uh, is upon the poor and take him, excuse me, and take and take from him burdens of wheat. Ye have built houses of hewn stone and ye shall not dwell in them and ye have planted pleasant vineyards. Ye shall not drink of the wine of them for I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. And they afflict the just, and they take a bribe 
and they turn aside the poor from the gate uh, from their right. So again, we get an, uh, another mention of wheat in that line. Let's go down to the next one. This is down in Jonah. I don't think it has anything to do with wheat, but it is interesting. Um, of what happens here. This is just where um, they're casting lots. And I thought, wow, why is the story of Jonah in here? So um, I didn't have that highlighted. But if we go down to the next one, which is in Micah. Let's look at this. So around verse three. Let's read from verse one. But thou Bethlehem Ephratah. Though thou be a little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of the tree shall come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old and from everlasting. Therefore he will give them up until the time which she, which travaileth, hath brought forth the remnant of his brethren, shall return to the children of Israel. The woman in travail, right? And he shall stand and feed in the strength of Yahuwah and in the majesty of the name of Yahuwah, his Elohim, and they shall abide. For now shall be a, a he for now he shall be great unto the ends of the earth. And this man shall be the peace. And when the Assyrians shall come unto our land, and when he shall tread our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds. And eight principal men. Right, so that's an end time prophecy still to be uh, fulfilled. But look at this right here. So remember, the very first one has to do with what? Um, wheat. In the new moon, this is in uh, Ezekiel, right? Talking about the seasons. Look at this. And it, by the way, that season was Sukkot. If we look down at the bottom in Haggai, this is really kind of cool that it sits right on that. Chapter two. Let's look at this first. In the seventh month, <clears throat> right? Because that's when Sukkot takes place. In the one and twentieth day of the month, which would be the twenty-first day, right, <clears throat> which is the the end of Sukkot. The next day is Shabbat, the twenty-second day. So this is the actual end of Sukkot, and going into the holy day of uh, the the Shabbat the next day. Right there, we've got a time of of distress. At Zarah runs right through there. So, so still much to find on this, on this table. I've only been working in a few hours, but it's been very productive. Um, and that's what I got. So I'll be working on that some more and some other ones. Uh, so just know that Jonathan's doing codes again um, and I'll get them to you as I get them completed. So we're going to continue on on this journey, teaching the calendar, teaching the secret of the week, which preserves a day called Shavuot. Hopefully people will get this. They will can come to the, the, the understanding that, you know, we were given false names. Not only were we given the false Messiah with this, um, you know, the, the Jesus persona, which was hiding our, our original, right? So they give us a they give us something right in front of the original. They did the same thing with Shavu. They gave us Pentecost right in front of the original. So that's what some uh, observe. You who obscured, obscured it, he hid it and preserved it for this time for you and for me. Shalom. We'll see you in the next video. May you who make his face shine upon you. And bless you and keep you. Shalom.